pray with us. Thank All you. All right, we're coming back with uh, with uh, Katie uh, Curtin Mestre, who's the director of uh, software planning and marketing at HP, and we're going to talk about uh, the business critical system software strategy and roadmap. Now, you want to do a, a reset here, Michael? Quick, are we good? Should I keep keep rolling? Okay, good. All right, good. So, uh, so we're here live. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and uh, we're here live at HP Discover. And uh, uh, Katie, come on in, and uh, we'll kick this next segment off. Uh, this is SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of HP Discover in Las Vegas. We're on our summer. It's Katie, welcome. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Glad Thanks to very be much here. for coming on the Cube. What's going on? You got that cool button that's going. HP UX has integrity. Yeah. Yes, and I've brought you one in case you want to wear it. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. Well, I'll definitely wear it for this segment. You know, but, uh, so tell me, what's going on with uh, HP UX? It's uh, the f the famous operating system still doing pretty well. You guys cranking right along? Yes, uh, HPX continues uh, to crank along. In fact, in the most recent uh, Unix preference study done by Gabriel Consulting, um, HPOX came across, came in as number one in multiple categories, from best in observed availability, uh, best in observed reliability, and best in delivering customers uh, the best TCO. So we're really um, happy with the progress that we're making with HPOX, and also very happy about the, the news that Dave Donatelli unveiled today during his keynote uh, that we're delivering uh, VPAR 6, uh, which is an enhancement that a lot of our customers ha have been waiting for. So talk about that. What's, uh, wh what's in there and why does it matter? Sure. So with uh, VPAR 6, we're bringing the performance and scalability of VPARs uh, uh, to our entire product line, uh, from our RX product line to our Integrity Blades to Superdome 2. Uh, with VPAR 6, customers get all of the performance and scalability of traditional VPARs with uh, the flexibility and mobility of being able to integrate their VPARs into the uh, converged infrastructure. So it's a, it's a great uh, step forward for our customers and we'll be starting to roll that out in the Q4 timeframe. So talk a little bit about, you know, we hear a lot of messaging in the industry around, around cloud and big data and mobile. How, how does HP UX play in there? Um, HP UX is very well integrated into HP's overall strategy um, in the cloud. Uh, with converged infrastructure, uh, customers can implement a, a single infrastructure for their storage, their servers, and their networking to include both their x86 workloads and their mission critical workloads running um, HP UX. So customers out there who are implementing um, private clouds can move forward knowing that they can have a single private cloud infrastructure for both their mission critical and their x86 workloads, all with a, a single uh, point of management with our matrix operating environment. So, are you, would you consider running uh, HP UX on a, a, say a pure Intel platform? Um, is that something that's entering the discussion? Uh, um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, currently, HP UX does run on the Intel platform. We run on the um, Intel and Itanium uh, processor uh, chipset, and we've had a lot of uh, success with the reliability and performance of, of, of the Itanium chip, and that is our plan going forward. Right, okay, so, um, so HP UX. Now, talk about the workloads that, that HP UX supports. Um, what, what makes them you know, unique? What's the, what's the classic HP UX workload, if there is one? Sure. Um, the classic HPOX workloads uh, running on Integrity Blades and Superdome are your mission critical workloads. These are the workloads for customers that quite simply um, cannot be uh, down. So for example, uh, telecommunication workloads, uh, workloads for uh, customers in uh, financial services, uh, as well as in healthcare. Uh, the common thread throughout, throughout all of these industries is uh, the need to have the, the best uh, performance, uh, scalability, um, and availability. Well, we recently um, did a study with uh, Forrester, and they found that customers are continuing to deploy um, Unix systems such as HPOX for the reliability, availability, and security that these platforms continue to provide them. Well, I remember everybody used to say the mainframe is dead, and now everybody wants a mainframe, right? They want, they want the manageability, the reliability, the availability, and it's interesting that um, I mean, Unix is not the highest grow the growing area of the market, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But it's reached a robustness. What is it about our industry? When we, once we get there, 
and we get all the features and capabilities everybody wants, we move on to a new platform. Oh, now let's go to Linux, or let's go to some mobile operating system. Wh why do you think that is? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not sure uh, why that is, uh, but certainly um, HPOX and Integrity are continuing to deliver the goods uh, for our customers, for their mission critical workloads, and, and we foresee that customers will continue to stick with Integrity and HPOX uh, for many years to come. Well, I think the customers understand that the, you know, the value that they get out of the system compared to the, the cost, risk, and an end state of a migration just doesn't make sense for a lot of the workloads. Do you feel like, do you feel like the base of, of, of HPUX, the, 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 the stable base that's there, understands that, or do you get a lot of, you know, some new CIO flies and it says, oh, we got to move to whatever, XYZ hot operating system there is. Do you still get a lot of that in the base, or do you think people really understand the, 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 the life cycle value you know what I'm saying? I think the majority of our customers uh, understand the value that Integrity and HVOX are delivering to their mission critical workloads. Certainly there are uh, cases where the CIO is going to come in and ask ask the IT team you know, to look at um, alternatives. And as I mentioned before, with uh, the Gabriel Consulting Study, uh, we came in number one in terms of low-end customers, you know, TCO. So CIOs can rest assured that by staying with Integrity and HPOX, they not only have a solution that delivers the reliability, availability, and security that they need, but it's also a solution that's very cost-effective from both a CapEx and OpEx uh, you know, perspective. So um, questions certainly do come up, but we feel that we can address them and really help customers understand uh, the value of staying the course. Did you compete in, in a sense with the mainframe class applications that are out there or is that just a whole different market segment? We, we certainly do compete um, against the mainframe um, and in fact in the last quarter we had over 100 migrations from both mainframe platforms and competitive platforms such as uh, Solaris in the last quarter so certainly um, we have seen some migrations from the mainframe to Integrity and HPUX. What about licensing, right? So we we all know the, the, how Oracle is approaching licensing, and they're trying to make Spark really attractive, and they're trying to make you know, H, a, a, you know, your platform less attractive. So, what do you what do you think about that? What what advice do you give to customers that are saying, hey, you know, give us some relief on on licensing? Um, how can we you know, optimize the return on investment uh, of our platform? What are you telling those people? I think what, what I would tell those customers is that we're going to work with them uh, to make sure that we have a cost-effective solution relative, you know, to our competition, and um, you know, there really, uh, of course, there's corner cases, but there really shouldn't be cases where customers have to walk away from Integrity and HVOX because we can't deliver a cost-effective solution to them. Do you see licensing models uh, changing, or are they pretty much stable? Um, I think licensing models in our space, you know, have, uh, you know, been, uh, you know, pretty stable. One of the things that people really appreciate about the licensing model that we've taken with HPOX relative to our competition is that we offer um, bundled configurations where everything has been pre-configured, pre-tested at very attractive price points versus forcing the customers to kind of build their solution, you know, a la carte and leaving a lot of the, the testing and integration work to them. So when you talk about, you, you mentioned the study, who's the group? The, uh, the Gabriel Consulting. Gabriel Consulting Group, they're doing the TCO analysis and I presume they're looking at the entire stack, is that right? I mean, the hardware, the software, the applications, is that right? Or Correct. So, so uh, I, I've heard from customers what's happening is, is that certain ISVs, I mentioned Oracle before, but perhaps others, are starting to charge on a per core basis. I mean, have you seen that? And 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 does it does it force HP to you know give relief in other areas, or or is that not prevalent? I think our licensing is uh, very competitive uh, in the industry with with other um, you know competitors, and and we're certainly um, aligned with kind of industry best practices. So mm -hmm. again, we're, we're pretty comfortable that we can compete with. Uh, any of uh, the vendors that are out there from both a CapEx and OpEx perspective, and just to speak again on the, the Gabriel result, this was an actual survey of customers who have deployed Unix, so really gratifying to see them select HVOX as the best solution in terms of delivering an overall TCO to customers. This is a real install base study, looking at the big picture. Yeah, looking at all at, at, at customers who have deployed all the different flavors of, of Unix and, and which they, they believe to be the best. 
So what's uh, what's ahead? Can you can you share a little roadmap with us? I mean, what are the things the customers are asking for that that you got your best people working on? Well, we're continuing to do a lot of work in the area of mission critical, you know, virtualization, and so um, we um, announced VPAR six. Um, at, um, during Dave Dontelli's keynote, and we'll continue to deliver enhancements in that area. We really want to make it possible so that customers can virtualize workloads of any size, type, or criticality, and be able to um, manage those um, within a private cloud context. So see, these are some of the areas of focus for us going forward. So you see the uh, HPUX as being a cri critical component of those mission critical private clouds, mm -hmm. right? And. Uh, and, uh, and what about the hybrid cloud? Are you starting to see demand for that or is that sort of not materialized yet? Well, yes, we're certainly starting to see demand for, for private clouds and customers want the you know, ability to uh, deploy their workloads into the private cloud and then be able to burst to the public cloud if they need um, you know, additional capacity. So we're certainly starting to see you know, some interest in that area. And uh, the advice that I would give to the Unix customers out there is you know, talk to the people in the IT organization who are architecting the private cloud initiatives and make it very clear that you can integrate HVUX and integrity uh, into your private cloud alongside your x86 x86 workloads with a uh, common hardware platform and with common management. Okay, we're here with Katie Curtin Mestri, Mestri or Mester? Mestre. Mestre? Yes, very good. Oh, wow, I love, is that, is that Italian? No, it's Cuban. <laughs> Cuban. Oh, <laughs> great. Mestre. I'm Italian, so we yeah, always use our Yeah, but it's actually hand. a name of a town in Italy, Katie too. Katie Curtin Mestre. Where is it? No north or southern Italy, is it? Do you know? <laughs> of, of Italy? Yeah. I don't know. You know <laughs> I have to go and check it out, personally. Are, are you going to wear the button? I couldn't open it. Oh, come on. It's I'll too open it secure. <laughs> Katie Curtin Mestre from HP's Bus Business Critical Systems Group. We're talking. See, it's not that easy. <laughs> right, you guys have, have really locked down that HP UX. Talking business critical okay, systems. Okay, I'm figuring oh, it out now. Oh, that's right. Now you have no excuse. <laughs> Great. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, good. So, uh, one last question. What's the strategy for new HPX you, uh, installations? Is, the, is there one, or is it primarily going after the install base? You got a pin here, Katie. I got a i got to poke it in my, my suit. Okay, I'm going to try. All righty, there you go. I'll speak to your right. question while you're doing go that. Ahead. Um, we're um, very much focused uh, on uh, on our cell base, but also on competitive uh, migrations. And in fact, we've had over 1,000 uh, migrations from mainframe and uh, alternative platforms, primarily um, Solaris. So, um, you know, we're, we're definitely focused on customers who are looking to consolidate their Unix environment. Many customers have a mix of HPUX, Solaris, and AIX, and we certainly have a compelling value proposition for customers who want to consolidate to a single uh, Unix vendor, and, and we think HP is the best choice for that. All right, good story. Katie Curtin, Mestre, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and, uh, and sharing your, your HPUX story and your vision. Appreciate it. All right, it. and very right. nice button. Thank you.